Megan shook her head still but didn't seem able to resist as he mother undid the buckles of her shortles, letting them drop to her ankles with a plop. Megan shut her eyes to the world as her wet pull-ups were revealed to her mom and Brian. He felt a bit bad about standing there watching this all, but like a car accident, something compelled him to stay and watch. Amanda poked her fingers in the waist of the pull-ups and yanked them down as well, revealing Megan's naked bottom to Brian. The poor girl whimpered and covered her privates from her mother while the woman took her ankles one at a time and slipped the shortles and sopping wet pull-ups off her. There we go Meggy. Isn't that better? Amanda cooed. Megan was still too busy trying to cover her shame to care about anything else. She just wanted her mother to get the new pull-up on her. She didn't even care that it was something a toddler wore, she just wanted something to cover up her nudity. But her mother was taking her time, oblivious to her daughter's embarrassment. She looked around and then declared, oops, forgot the wipes. Okay, just wait right here sweetheart while mommy goes upstairs and gets some tissue from the bathroom. Don't go anywhere till I get you cleaned up. Don't go anywhere. Where would I go? I'm all naked. Megan exclaimed. You're not naked silly goose. You've got a shirt on. But still, I don't want you running outside naked bum since this isn't our house and Brian's mom might not be happy about that. Megan stood there absolutely flabbergasted as her mom left the room to look for tissue. There she was, naked from the waist down, wet with her own pee and in plain view of one of her best male friends. For a few minutes out in the yard this had all been fun, but now it had taken a serious turn for the worse. And now that she thought about it, why had that been so fun in the yard? What was happening to them to make them enjoy kiddie toys and lose control of their bladders? Brian was having similar thoughts as he watched Megan stand shivering and ashamed before him. The only bright spot for him was that he still seemed to have control over his bladder. At least he hoped he did anyway. Okay, time for my big boy to make mommy proud, Sara announced, entering the room with a strange contraption. Brian couldn't figure out what the heck it was she was carrying. It looked like a big plastic flower pot built into a stool. As she came closer though Brian could see that the top was a hole surrounded by a contoured yellow plastic seat. It was only when she set it on the carpeted floor that it hit him. This was a potty chair. It was just like the kind he'd seen toddlers use except that it was bigger and had legs lifting it slightly higher off the ground. In other words it was meant for someone fully grown, like him. Sara smiled encouragingly at her son and gestured to the seat. Come on Brian, let's get all that pee pee out so you can play and not have to worry about keeping you big boy pants dry. No. Brian yelped, stepping back from the disgusting little seat. I don't have to go. Don't play that game with me mister. We both know that's what you say every time right before you tinkle your pants. Now let's give the potty a try for once, like a big kid. Brian didn't want to sit down on that stupid potty and make pee pee right in front of his mommy and his friends. That would be even more humiliating than what was happening to Megan right now. He considered running away, bolting out the front door right now. But then how far could he get? He was barefoot, no sign of shoes anywhere. Everyone in the world now seemed to think he was an incompetent toddler. He'd be found and returned home by the police in no time. So Brian just stood there, unable to figure out what to do as Sarah stepped forward and began to undo the buckles on his overalls. With a couple of snaps Brian heard the buckles undo and felt the shoulder straps go loose. Mommy slipped them off and just like that the overalls dropped to his ankles, revealing a white pull-up with a Winnie the Pooh design on the front. As his mother reached for his pull-up Brian squirmed, trying to step backwards but impeded by the bunched-up overalls. Stay still you little wiggle worm, Sara told him. Brian let out a little moan of despair as his mom grasped the pull-up and yanked it down. Instantly he shivered from head to toe as cool air rushed across his exposed privates. He tried to cover up his shame as Megan had but his mom had grabbed his hands and was turning him around and forcing him to sit on the potty seat. Soon he felt the cool plastic on his bare bottom. There we go, sitting on his potty like a big boy. 
Good job, Brian. Sara praised. Brian didn't feel like a big boy, not one little bit. He felt demeaned, stripped of all power and dignity. The only small comfort was that the potty seat shielded his penis from view. At least he wasn't being forced to stand half-naked in the middle of the room like Megan was. Unfortunately Joy had just arrived with Rachel and she led the girl into the room, positioning her so she was looking at Brian. He couldn't bring himself to make eye contact with her. He stared at his feet, the bare toes just peeking out from the pile of his clothes. Joy seemed oblivious to the young man's embarrassment. Look Rachel, she directed her daughter, pointing at the poor fellow on the potty seat. Brian's using the potty like a big boy. Are you going to show him how you can use the potty too? Brian could just make out Rachel wordlessly shaking her head from the corner of his eye. It all seemed like a bad dream to him. It was like the recurring nightmare he'd once had about being naked at school. This, however, seemed infinitely worse. He wondered how long he'd be subjected to this humiliation. She couldn't make him sit here for too long could she? It wasn't like he could actually go. There was no way he could pee-pee in front of all these people. It was the strange sound that broke Brian out of his reverie. It sounded like water rushing down a drain somewhere. He couldn't figure out where the noise was coming from, though it sounded very close. Then he saw the wide grins his mom and Joy had on their faces and the look of horror Rachel had on hers. Now it was she who was avoiding eye contact with him. Good boy. Sara cheered. It took another second for Brian to put it all together. Then it finally clicked. The noise was one of liquid splashing against plastic. It was the sound of him making tinkles in the potty. He hadn't even felt his bladder let go. He was tinkling his pee-pee out into this silly child's toy in front of his best friends and his mom without even being able to control it. And the worst part of it was that these adults were actually praising him for it. Look honey, Brian is making tinkles. Joy announced to Rachel. Even Megan was now looking over her shoulder at Brian's plight while her mom assured her, don't worry Maggie, you'll get the chance to show Brian you can use the potty like a big girl just like him soon enough. It was all too much for Brian. He could feel his eyes beginning to sting as they welled up with tears. He tried to control his emotions, not look any more of a little kid than he already did. He couldn't keep it together though and soon salty tears were streaking down his blushing cheeks. Oh sweetie, Sara cooed as she saw Brian's distress. What's the matter buddy? Mommy is very proud of her big boy. There's no reason for crocodile tears. The steady flow of pee into the potty had tapered off to a few final spurts, the noises still echoing through the room to Brian's horror. As it finally stopped Brian sniffled and declared, I'm not supposed to use this little kid potty. Sara gave him a sympathetic look and leant in close, wrapping her arms around him and brushing her hand through his hair. There, there, she whispered. It's okay buddy, I think my big boy just needs some cuddles from his mommy. Brian sobbed quietly as his mom snuggled him close. He couldn't deny that this felt really nice, being in his mommy's strong protective arms. Her sweater was soft and cuddly on his skin and she smelled of her familiar perfume. Brian leant his face onto her shoulder, drying his tears on it while her hand rubbed his back. As his sniffles slowed down he heard mommy whisper into his ear again. There we go. Feeling better sweetie. Brian pulled back and looked into his mommy's loving face, seeing that her eyes filled with concern for him. Whatever else was wrong, it at least felt nice to be so loved. He didn't have to reply to her question, as she could see his answer in his eyes. Okay, let's get you up so Rachel can make her tinkles too, she directed, lifting Brian back to his feet by his armpits and helping him back into his pull-up and overalls. Brian was led over to the couch to wait while Rachel did her business. Mommy sat next to him and slipped his teddy, buddy, into his arms to comfort him. It didn't surprise him that much anymore that snuggling the teddy in his arms was actually quite comforting. In fact he found himself resting his head against his mommy's shoulder again, growing a bit sleepy. 
his potty ordeal had really been quite draining. Megan meanwhile was being forced to give up her attempts to retain a shred of her privacy as he mother pulled her hands away from her privates so she could wipe her clean. The young woman at least managed to face the opposite wall so that all Brian could see was her bare bum. After a few moments Amanda helped Megan to step into a new white pull-up with pink print swirls. There we go, all set. Amanda declared. Megan stared at her, dumbfounded. What about my pants, she asked. Oh, I don't think we need to bother with those, princess. It'll be nap time soon anyway. I don't want to run around in just a dumb pull-up mommy. Amanda chuckled and said to Sarah, isn't it cute when they try to act all grown up, ignoring the girl's plea. I know, they all want to grow up so quickly. Sarah agreed. Soon they'll be missing the days when they could run around with no pants on. The sounds of pee pee splashing in the potty echoed through the room again and all heads turned to look at Rachel. The poor young lady, only yesterday an honor student and mature adult, had her face buried in her hands as she peed. That a girl. Joy was praising her, to no avail. Rachel finally looked up from her hands with anger etched across her face. She was humiliated all right, but she was also pissed. This is all wrong. I will not let you treat me like this, she spat at her mother. Rachel, good girls don't talk to their mommies that way, Amanda sternly told the girl. And remember to use your inside voice please, she added. The young woman on the oversized potty fumed, but seemed stung by her mom's rebuke. Joy turned to the other moms and said, I think they're all getting pretty cranky. Rachel certainly needs a nap anyway. Yes, I think they could all do with a nap before we get a full-blown temper tantrum, Amanda agreed while Sarah nodded. Joy helped Rachel to stand again, wiping her dry with a tissue and then letting her slide her pull-ups back up. No one bothered to ask them if they were actually sleepy, all three simply found themselves being led upstairs to Brian's bedroom. None of them struggled this time, not after Brian winked at the girls and placed his finger to his lips. The three college friends stayed silent and behaved while their moms settled them on the carpeted floor of the room and placed well-worn baby blankets over them, slipping plush stuffed animals into their arms. Then with a flurry of forehead kisses the moms withdrew so their little ones could sleep in peace. Alone again at last none of the trio actually went to sleep, despite the fact that they all did feel oddly drowsy. It wasn't dark out yet, heck it was only late afternoon, but there they were lying down to go to sleep while older, kids, could be heard playing outside. None of them said a word about the ridiculous situation they were in. None of them wanted to risk a mom coming back in to shush them and coddle them even more. After five minutes of silence it was Brian who finally spoke up, though only at a low whisper. Ratch, Meg, you still awake? Yes, two voices whispered back. Brian rolled on his side to look over at his friends, still cuddling Buddy's soft form against his chest. Rachel was nearest to him, a stuffed white bunny in her arms, sad eyes staring back at him. Megan was beside her, but crept forward from underneath her blankie to be part of the conversation. This is all too weird guys. How do we get out of this? Brian put to them. Why don't we just run away now, Megan suggested. Our mommies aren't here, they think we're sleeping. We could just sneak out your window. Rachel rolled her eyes. Oh yeah, three pants wetting toddlers running barefoot down the street, one without so much as a pair of shorts to cover her pull-ups. I'm sure no one will stop us, she muttered sarcastically. Well do you have a better idea? Megan snapped back. This is no time to argue, Brian reminded them. But Rachel's right. Even if we could change into better clothes, everything in that closet is no doubt made for a toddler and none of us has shoes. That also doesn't change the fact that we apparently can't control our pee-pee anymore. I didn't pee-pee in my pants, Rachel reminded them haughtily. Yet, Megan snapped. Look, the point is we wouldn't make it far without some adult intervening. This is America, people tend to notice unattended little kids out on the street. So what do we do then? 
Rachel sighed. We know that book caused all this right. So we get our hands on it again and find a way to fix things. The girls both nodded now, agreeing with Brian. But where is it? Rachel asked. Remember we just left it out there in the yard. With all the pants tinkling and playing I forgot all about it. Look, one of our moms will have taken it with the rest of our stuff, so whoever finds it first stash it somewhere until we can look at it together. We don't want to cause any more changes now do we? Rachel and Megan nodded vigorously. So what do we do till then? Megan asked. Just keep playing along I guess. It's not like we have much choice. Yeah, but Brian, Megan began, her voice quavering now. There, there's something wrong with me too. I really enjoyed that play place. I mean, it was fun going down that slide and climbing. I forgot how stupid I must look. I forgot I was dressed like a toddler. And then, and then. I didn't even feel it. I tinkled in my pants and didn't know till I felt it all over my pull-ups. Brian and Rachel shared concerned looks as Megan whispered her fears to them. I know what you mean Meg. I thought I was just going to hide from mommy in there at first. But then, when I got inside it something came over me. I don't know why but it was just so much fun to play like a little kid. Anne, and I didn't realise when I started to pee pee either, Brian admitted. This is all wrong. We're mature young adults and we still have our minds right? We haven't been changed into drooling idiots like our friends. So it is up to us to fix this thing. So let's pull ourselves, Rachel interrupted herself to yawn loudly, together. As though it were contagious both Brian and Megan began to yawn as well. Why am I so sleepy? Megan asked. Dunno, I think we all are. Think I'll just shut my eyes for a sec, Brian mumbled, cuddling his teddy closer and shutting his droopy eyes. Rachel and Megan followed suit and within seconds all three were fast asleep cuddled with their stuffed friends at four in the afternoon. All dressed up. Wakey wakey sleepyheads. Brian and the girls opened their eyes some time later to find Sara standing smiling over them. Looking over at the window they could see it was still daylight out, but it was definitely later in the day. They had actually taken a nap, their mommies had been right about them being tired after all. Come on you're three, nap time is over. We need to get some numbers in those tummies now. We're gonna eat. Brian asked his mom. Yep, Rachel and Megan's mommies went and picked up their little brother and sister so we can all go out to dinner. We're all going to Pasta Pete's. Sarah announced. Brian swallowed a groan. Pasta Pete's was a local family restaurant, always filled with annoying kids and squalling babies. It wasn't the kind of place college kids ever ate at. In fact he couldn't remember going there since he was about ten. Still he forced a smile, remembering the decision they'd made to play along until they had the book again. They followed Brian's mom back downstairs to the living room where the other two moms were already waiting. As they entered the room Brian got his first look at Dan, Rachel's little brother. She'd said before that he was dressed and acting like a toddler, so Brian was interested to see if the second reality shift had changed him as well. As soon as they set eyes on the 18-year-old young man they knew the world had shifted for everyone once again. When they were kindergartners he'd been a toddler. Now that they were somewhere in the terrible tis themselves it appeared he had gone even further back. Since his body hadn't changed it was hard to gauge his mental age exactly, but from his dress and behaviour Brian figured the kid was about 18 months rather than years now. Danny was sitting on his bottom in the middle of the room wearing a small green striped t-shirt and a bulky white diaper. The puffy garment was certainly no set of pull-ups that was for sure. He wore no pants over the diaper either, his long bare legs smooth and hairless like Brian's, splayed out before him. He wiggled the toes on his bare feet back and forth idly as he scribbled aimlessly with an awkwardly held green crayon across a sheet of paper between his legs. The sight of Danny grinning while he scribbled with Crayon was nothing compared to what was going on just across the room. There Amanda was sitting with her daughter Sue on the couch. 
All three of them stopped where they were and gaped at what was happening before their eyes. Sue was dressed in a fuzzy yellow onasi, her crinkly white diaper sticking out of it a bit around the leg holes. Her smooth bare legs were draped across the couch as her body lay across her mom's lap. They couldn't see her face, only the back of her head, the thin wild hair tied up in a single hairband so it stood straight up. Her face was obscured because Amanda had her pulled in close to her bosom. The teen girl was suckling on her mommy's boob. In the silence that fell when the trio froze all they could hear was the scribble of Danny's crayon on paper and Sue suckling. Amanda was gently rubbing the teen's back and whispering into the overgrown baby's ear. Rachel seemed to be the most disturbed by the sight, covering her mouth tightly as though trying not to vomit. Brian was having a different but equally embarrassing reaction. Physically he was still very much a guy and so he couldn't help but stare at the scene on the couch, praying for Sue to finish so he could get a look at Amanda's boobs. He'd thought they looked unusually big before and now he knew why. She was nursing. Well here we all are. Sarah announced cheerfully, entering the room behind the three frozen kids. Danny looked up from his drawing, the crayon dropping from his uncoordinated fingers. Danny eat, he yelled, patting his tummy with both hands. Yes Danny, we're all going to eat soon, Sarah agreed, nodding to the boy. Who that? Danny shouted back, pointing at Brian. That's my little boy Brian, Sarah replied. Who that, the teen shouted again, now pointing at Megan while he's twiddling his toes together. That's Megan. She's a big girl like your sister Rachel, she answered. Apparently satisfied, Danny rose awkwardly to a squat then stood with his arms out for balance. Once he was fully upright he stuck his hands out towards them and toddled over. His legs were bowed out widely but they couldn't tell if that was due to the thick diaper or just his immature gait. In any case he seemed able to walk and even run on his own, but clearly not with very much skill or balance. He made a beeline for his sister, wrapping his arms around the poor girl who was still trying to hold back an urge to throw up. Ah! Sarah cooed as Danny gave his sis a big baby hug. All eyes turned to the couch just then as the sound of suckling abruptly stopped. Amanda was easing Sue's mouth off her breast, a bit of white milky liquid dribbling down the girl's chin and a visible strand still connecting nipple to slack lips. The string of milk and spittle broke as Sue's head slipped back into her mom's cradling elbow. Brian's eyes were big as saucers and he felt drawn towards Amanda, not taking his eyes off her exposed breast. He moved across the room towards her, barely aware he was doing so. Amanda didn't seem to notice or care about his interest. She only had eyes for the big baby in her lap. Brian was standing right before her soon enough, licking his lips and feeling glad the tight pull-up and overalls hid the reaction he was having. Then a hiccup broke his concentration and he glanced down at the teen girl lying across the couch before him. Sue was a pretty girl but it was clear that she was now nothing but a big infant. Her bare legs were bowed out by the thick diaper, even more so than Danny's. They twitched and kicked without coordination. Sue's eyes were wide open, but there was nobody home. The baby blue eyes stared vacantly between the ceiling and her mom's face, glassy and empty of recognition. A rivulet of slobber was creeping down her left cheek, her chin already wet with milky drool. Sue burbled and spluttered silly meaningless sounds before bringing her hands to her mouth and chewing on her fingers. As she mouthed them Brian was able to see that Sue had no more than a couple small teeth. It was a stunning sight. Is Sue all done feeding? Sarah asked. Yep, my little Susie's had her numinums, Amanda replied, fixing her bra and doing her shirt back up. Okay, let's get the kids ready, Sarah said. Joy came in from the kitchen and headed straight over to where Danny was now playfully turning the hallway light switch on and off. She was carrying a pair of elastic waist khakis shorts. Okay buddy boy, time to get you all dressed up for the restaurant, she declared. Danny cooperated while she slipped the shorts on him. He seemed too enthralled with the light switches to even care that he was being dressed. Brian doubted the boy cared one bit was he was dressed in any way. 
In his state of mind he probably would have been happy to go to the restaurant buck naked or in a frilly pink dress. Amanda set Sue down on the carpet and rummaged through a bag to get something for Megan to wear. Soon she emerged with a pair of pink shorts. Okay sweetie, come to mommy, she beckoned. Megan was all too happy to comply. She was sick of being the only one with no pants on. Little pink shorts with hearts were not her usual but they could have been so much worse. So she let her mom slip them over one foot at a time and pull them up. It was a relief to have her pull-ups covered up at last. In fact she was better off that Rachel now, as her short little dress failed to hide her puffy pull-ups. Having successfully clothed her son Joy had now turned to Rachel, directing her to sit on the floor. Rachel had done as she was told, hopeful she'd be dressed in something at least marginally better than the silly outfit she had on at the moment. She was not a fan of frills and cutesy short dresses, even on little girls. She'd have been happy even to be dressed as her friend Megan was. But when Joy returned from the front hall she didn't have a new outfit for her daughter, just a pair of glitter-covered jelly sandals which she proceeded to strap onto the pouting girl's feet. With the kids dressed the other two moms seemed ready to go as well. Amanda scooped Sue up from the carpet and steadied the teen girl on her hip, slipping a red and white binky between the girl's lips. Brian looked around and furrowed his brow. Where are my shoes mommy, he asked. Sarah shook her head. Don't worry honey, you'll be fine without them, she assured. Brian shook his head. He couldn't go out in public, to a restaurant, without any shoes on. They wouldn't let him in like that would they? Mommy I need shoes, he insisted. Sarah rolled her eyes and turned to the other moms, ignoring her son's pleas. He pulls his shoes and socks off every time I put them on him. I can't tell you how many sneakers and socks are now missing a partner because he throws them away. It's easier just to let him go barefoot you know. Joy nodded. I know, my little Danny's the same way. He just loves having his toeses all free. Funny how little kids just hate shoes. If it's just shoes they hate you're getting off easy, Amanda told them. My little ones hate wearing clothes altogether. The mothers shared a round of laughter at their struggles while Brian continued to plead. But Rachel has shoes. Well Rachel is becoming a young lady and she knows how to keep her shoes on like a big girl, Sarah retorted. Brian was crestfallen but could see this was a losing battle. Megan was being led by the hand to the car in her bare feet as well but she wasn't complaining. She was just happy she'd been given something to cover her pull-ups. Of course the restaurant wouldn't care that they were barefoot, Brian admitted, because little toddlers didn't count as real people. So he gave up and padded out the front door after his mom, wincing as he trod over sharp pebbles and hot tarmac to the car. He just kept thinking about how he would get the book back soon and then somehow he'd end this nightmare. Eating out Pasta Pete's was a buzzing cauldron of activity. Families with screaming kids sat at every table while waiters in tacky white shirts, red bow ties and black suspenders rushed about with large trays of food. It was a cheap family restaurant all right, complete with red and white checked plastic tablecloths and pictures of stereotypical Italian street scenes on the walls. As they waited for a table to open up Brian looked around at the other family seated or waiting for a table. Men a few years older than him twisted back and forth excitedly while parents held their hands. A fortyish woman tied a bib around the neck of a messer-faced young lady about their age. Brian decided that in this new world children stayed infants much longer than normal but then rather suddenly grew up between age 18 and 30. He saw no appreciable difference in behavior between kids who looked 16 and those who looked 10. After 10 minutes of excruciating waiting in the crowded entry area a man in a stupid waiter outfit topped off with a straw boater hat appeared with a set of menus. He looked over the assembled family and smiled pleasantly at them. He didn't groan at the sight of a gaggle of unhygienic and potentially vagrant young adults in a restaurant without shoes. All he saw was a group of cute 20-year-old toddlers. Welcome to Pasta Pete's. Follow me please, he directed. The table was made up for them already. 
Two of the chairs were quite different from the rest. They couldn't really be called height chairs because of course they didn't lift their occupants any higher than the normal seats. Yet they looked like height chairs. They even had straps to buckle occupants into them. Three other chairs at the table had red booster seats on them. The trio knew these were for them and they took their special seats without comment. They had been sat next to each other, a cup of crayons and three placemats with lots of kids' puzzles and games laid out before them. Trying to get their minds off their predicament they each took a crayon and began to work on the puzzles while the moms got the babies settled in their high chairs, threading legs through the holes and doing up seat buckles. Sue's binky dropped from her mouth and she immediately began to squall. Luckily Amanda found it and cleaned it off quickly, reinserting it in the crying girl's mouth. Her tears were gone as quickly as they began. Returning his attention to the puzzle Brian found the maze he was working on trickier than expected. For one thing it was very tough to manipulate the crayon. He couldn't grasp it correctly for some reason. He'd used pens and pencils for years but the manner in which he was supposed to hold one escaped him. Sending the crayon where he wanted to was equally difficult. He kept crossing the lines. Even worse though, he couldn't seem to think ahead. He kept hitting dead ends in what should have been a simple maze. The whole thing was frustrating and worrying. Brian finally abandoned the maze and threw his crayon away, looking over at his friend's papers to see they too were having trouble. Rachel was having a hard time just connecting the dots on her mat while Megan's usual drawings were now nothing but scribbles. It was quite a relief when the food finally came, though Rachel was particularly upset their mothers had simply ordered for them without even asking for their preferences. She didn't want plain old spaghetti, but no one would give her a menu and even if they had she knew she wouldn't have been able to read it anyway. As the waiter set down plates before them the moms were all quickly out of their seats, tying bibs around Sue and Danny, then turning to the toddlers. Joy picked up Rachel's napkin, unfolded it and began to stuff it into the neck of her dress like a makeshift bib. Hey, stop it. I don't need that. Rachel insisted, twisting back and forth to escape her mom's hands. I'm sure you'll be a big girl and be very clean for me dear, but just in case we need to keep your pretty dress clean. Pretty dress. I hate this stupid thing, just leave me alone. Rachel wailed loud enough to make heads turn from nearby tables. Rachel, don't make a scene. Joy scolded. Sit still and be a good girl or there will be no dessert for you. Rachel pouted but quieted down, not because of the threat but because she realized people were indeed looking at her like a bratty toddler. Megan and Brian said nothing as their moms tucked napkins into their shirts the same way. If colouring with crayons had been hard, eating was near impossible. Brian blamed the utensils. While the adults had normal metal forks and knives they had to make do with simple plastic cutlery. Abandoning the proper adult grip Brian held his fork in his closed fist and shoveled the spaghetti into his mouth as best he could. Sure enough it wasn't long before his napkin bib was stained liberally in tomato sauces. He was certain his cheeks and chin were no better. It took all his concentration to bring the fork to his mouth properly. His only consolation was that Rachel and Megan were doing no better. This is stupid. Rachel finally declared, throwing down her fork and crossing her arms in frustration. Joy looked up from her meal and gave her daughter a firm look. Rachel, finish your meal, she said calmly. No. I don't even like spaghetti with tomato sauce. Rachel, if you don't finish that, no dessert for you tonight. I don't care. Really? You won't care when your friends Brian and Megan are eating yummy ice cream and you have to just watch. Rachel said nothing, but didn't even look at the food. Joy sighed and got up from her seat, going to Rachel's side. Rachel, you are going to eat your dinner or mommy will have to feed it to you like a little baby. No. Rachel gasped, looking up at her mother with terror. Yes Rachel, eat like a big girl or like a baby, it's your choice. Her bottom lip quivering, Rachel picked the fork back up and shoveled another messy load of spaghetti into her mouth. I'm not a baby, she insisted. 
I know that honey, her mommy assured her. You're a big girl who can feed herself. Now show mommy how you can finish all your food, Joy encouraged, rubbing Rachel's shoulder. By the end of the meal all three were feeling quite silly about how messy they'd gotten. Although they weren't nearly as bad as little Danny, who'd fed himself with his fingers. The giggling teen's hands, cheeks and chin were all red with sauce. Megan was feeling a bit overly full from the meal, even though it hadn't really been that much. She burped loudly and then cringed with embarrassment at her faux pas. The mothers just smiled and giggled at her rudeness though. As the moms worked on cleaning their babies' faces with wet naps Danny's smile left his face and he got a look of intense concentration. For a moment the trio wondered it may be some of the old Dan's adult mentality was trying to break through. Then they heard the rude noises, muffled by his diaper and shorts, erupting from him. Loud farts and little popping sounds could be heard as he squinted and grunted softly. Brian gasped and looked away when he realised what was happening. Rachel was frozen in horror watching her own brother soil himself. Megan was absolutely disgusted. The teenaged young man smiled again as he finished his business, looking up at his mommy and announcing, Poopy. Uh-oh, Rachel chuckled, I think we have a little Mr. Stinker Pants here. The smell of what the young fellow had done wafted through the air, leaving no doubt he'd made a real load in his big diaper. The scent of it and the smile on Danny's face was too much for Megan. She gagged and covered her mouth, but combined with her indigestion she couldn't hold it back. Megan vomited a bit before regaining control. It wasn't that much, but it was down her bib and badly stained her shirt. Just the sight of the disgusting stuff on her Sesame Street shirt made her want to throw up even more. Oh Megan! Amanda exclaimed, rushing to her daughter's side. Are you feeling sick honey? It stinks. Megan managed to blurt out. Oh, poor girl, you must have eaten too much baby. And you've gotten it all over your nice shirt too. Megan blinked back tears, looking around her and realizing people were staring. I'm sorry, she mumbled. It's okay honey, mommy will get you all cleaned up. Amanda turned to the other moms and asked, could you watch them for a sec? I need to go to the car and get her a new shirt. Sarah nodded. I'll watch them. Joy, you just go take care of Danny. Joy nodded and unbuckled the boy from the chair. Okay little stinker, let's get you changed, she chirped, leading the still grinning boy to the bathroom with the diaper bag over her shoulder. Amanda tutted as she looked over the mess her daughter had made of her shirt. Okay honey, let's get you out of this messy shirt. Mommy will get you a clean one from the car, she told Megan, grasping the bottom of the shirt and pulling it up. Megan shrieked and pulled away but it happened so suddenly she wasn't prepared for it. In one swift motion her shirt was up over her head and slipping off her upraised arms. Just like that she found herself sitting in a crowded family restaurant topless, not even a bra to hide her breasts. Mommy, I'm topless, she gasped, crossing her arms to keep some dignity. Well you can't just sit in a shirt covered in throw up sweetie. Mommy will be back with your unicorn shirt in a second. As her mother left with her shirt Megan shivered in shame. This was worse than what had happened at home. As bad as that had seemed at the time, being topless in full public view was infinitely worse. Sure, it had happened a couple times at drunken parties back at college, but that was different. Then she'd chosen to take off her shirt and she'd been one of several topless girls. Now no one was even staring at her, no one cared that she her boobs were on display. She was just another toddler who'd ruined her shirt as far as anyone was concerned. Somehow that made it all even worse. While Brian was trying not to get caught staring at his half-naked friend, Rachel had problems of her own to worry about. The urge to pee had struck her suddenly and violently. It was as though she'd been holding it in all day. She was seriously worried she wouldn't be able to wait long. I... I need to potty, she called out, immediately regretting her childish choice of words but unable to think of how else to explain her need.